right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Oh, I got to remember which controls do what. Oh, my goodness. It's been a while since I've touched all these controls. Ooh, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Weekly Flow. Let me bring that down just a little bit more. That's a that's a jam. <clears throat> I don't know. That thing always gets me hyped up. What's up, everyone? We got Colleen in the background here. Actually, let's go to this view here so we can see everything. Ooh, and I'm showing the iPhone, but we won't have that iPhone in the shot for now. What's up, everyone? I see Michael in the comments. Hello, Michael. Hello, uh, Maggie. Hello, hello. Who? Oh, Rowan. What's up, buddy? I've been watching your little... Uh, I enjoy your throat singing videos on Instagram. If you guys don't, you should follow Rowan. He was uh, one of the OGs back at the first Weblo conference. Colleen, you met him. Uh, yes. And he's got, the, he's got a yurt in his backyard, yurt. and he does the throat singing stuff. And yeah. Let's see, we've got Aiva in the background. Hello, I think I've actually got Aiva here. Let me see, can I bring him in? Yeah, Aiva's in the house. What's up, Aiva? Yo, we got a multimedia setup right here. I know you guys don't know this right now, but check this. We even have the iPhone in play, so we could get a little wild if we want to do whatever we want to do. I don't know how far we're going to go, but we're going to keep pushing the limits of this digital experiment that we have here. Devin Fountaine in the house, Marquise, what's up? Evil Twins has entered the chat. Hello, everyone. Anyway, I want to have a conversation today. Um, there's nothing really that sparked this, except for I've kind of been thinking about this, and it leads into what we've been talking about. The theme for Global Open House is kind of building a better internet. Um, if you're interested in getting involved, there's a link in the comments. You can jump in this conversation with us. So if you're watching this and you want to get involved, there's a link in the description. You can pop into the back. We can bring you in just like we had Aiva here, so then you can be in the hot seat. Uh, just just like them. But we're going to have a conversation here. The goal for the Global Open House, uh, which is coming up uh, March 21st, is building a better internet. And we've had our public planning uh, for some of that. So let's kind of get into that. And it's kind of like been the topic here. And then I've been seeing some things on the internet. I just got back from Argentina doing some, you know, cool meetup stuff. Maybe we'll talk about that a little bit. But I'm seeing like these two dichotomies happen on the on the web where it's like this beautiful potential of the things we could build if we all work together to build, you know, like fun, interesting, really valuable uh, content exchange interactions, communities on the internet. And then I see this like predatory thing forming where big businesses are like shaping your behavior and people are spamming and taking advantage of algorithms and people are doing pump and dumps with crypto things. And, um, you know, there's just, it's like two roads forming here. And I wonder like, how do these roads play out? And I kind of wanted to talk a, a, about that a little bit. So let's just go to the theme of building a better internet. We're doing this public roadmap. Uh, we have two public planning meetings left. One is next week. So if you're hanging with us and you're interested in being a part of that, there are still ways to get involved. Any thoughts, Colleen? We've had some really good um, committee meetings with both the content team, the web design team, the mm -hmm. gather map planning team. I know some of those people are in the comments right now. Um, so any any thoughts just in, in the process so far planning? Yeah, it's uh, some of the planning has been, it's kind of like, uh, you know, infrastructure for building a house, like you're you put the the wiring, the electrical wiring down, the plumbing down, all those all those types of things. So a lot of that kind of work has been been happening in recent weeks. Been really fruitful discussions. We've shared a little bit on on Twitter. So depending upon who you're following, you may have seen some of those um, little 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 teasers starting to come out. And I think uh, as we get closer to the event, those teasers will be more a little bit a little bit meatier than they than they've been thus far. But yeah, everybody has been kind of bringing amazing ideas to the table. Uh, it's also been just very interesting. It's very, been a very global uh, planning planning process. So there have been individuals who've gotten up at five and six in the morning to join some of the conversations. Um, there are other people where it's uh, a lot later in the evening for them to be joining. And so as another thing that we've been doing as part of this process has been shifting when meetings are happening. So sometimes they're in the morning, sometimes they're later in the day, just so that uh, it is it is truly going to be a global event for the Webflow community, and it's also being planned by a global team, which I think is exciting. Yeah, and I can't. Um, there's going to be more experiments. Uh, we we've been talking about like some continuous live stuff, and I, I don't know how we're going to bring that in, but we're we're playing with like a live lobby, live co working, kind of just we. The, the the one of the things, and this is pertinent to the global open house because like the last couple of years, we've kind of put off the you know, the, the, the far further reaching community saying, we'll get to that eventually. We'll figure out how to create some overlap at some point. Um, but this is the year we're tackling that. 
And so to Colleen's point, we're not just going to focus on having like the core, which we will, we'll still have a core event. We'll still have a live panel. We've got some interesting things that we're putting together as far as the show goes, as it relates to that. But then around the edges of that, we're just going to invite folks to come and plan events throughout the course of the day. So we're going to try to schedule as much stuff that day as possible to overlap some of those different time zones and bring awareness to groups outside of the typical kind of Eastern to, you know, Western U.S. time zone. So um, if that's you and you're still interested, there's ways to get involved here. So here's the Road to the Global Open House. We've got uh, the planning meeting publicly next week. So join us for that. Spread the word for that. That's kind of, we're going to give you a sneak peek of where we're at. We're going to reveal some of the theme. We're going to share some of the content strategy. Um, that'll be kind of the first point where all of the committees kind of come together in public again. So we're doing some of this in public, some of this in private. The committees are kind of doing their work around the edges. And then we're coming together around these big monthly roundtables to everyone share goals and strategies and really shape this. So if you want to have an impact, that's the place to do it. And you can see here's a couple still places where you might be able to get involved. The content team, that's kind of organizing what we'll see and what's going on. Um, we've got uh, a link in the description if you want to get involved, right, Colleen? I think that yes. there is a link there as well for folks to be able to jump in. And if you still want to host a meetup uh, and get involved in a panel, if you'd like to volunteer, if you'd like to sponsor, we are looking for some sponsors for this and ongoing opportunities. So anyway, that is this slide. Uh, yeah, and the link is there if you'd like to get involved. <clears throat> From there, let's see uh, if you'd like to get into the backstage. Oh, yeah, I wanted to set this up with the tragedy of the commons because I think the Internet has become the ultimate commons. And if you're familiar with this story, then maybe this is going to be a little redundant. But if you're not familiar, I want to get everyone on the same page. So this is like a little one-minute overview of the tragedy of the commons. I'm just going to play this here, and we can take the conversation from there. Back in 1833, William Foster Lloyd noticed something fascinating about the so-called common pastures. In other words, pastures without an owner, which can be used by everyone. He noticed that these common pastures were in considerably worse shape than those which had an owner. Why? Simply because the short-term self-interest of the people who were using those pastures made them consume too many resources, and in the long run, everyone suffered. George asked himself, should I buy another animal? and decided that yes, he'd make more money that way. He knew he was overloading the pasture, but didn't care, he wanted the extra money. The problem is that everyone did the same thing. In the end, the pasture was brutally overloaded and therefore became unusable. Some people made short-term profits, but in the long run, everyone lost. As far as the pastures which had an owner were concerned, this didn't happen because it was in the best interest of the owners to exploit their property sustainably. Today, similar situations occur frequently. For example, with fishing grounds such as the Grand Banks of Newfoundland, which used to be home to a huge cod population. About 50 years ago, however, technology enabled people to catch a lot more fish than before. The fish population, and thereby the fishing industry, collapsed by the 90s and might never recover. The same way, humans are doing everything from polluting their Earth's oceans and atmosphere to generating traffic jams right, during... We can just kind of end it here. But that's the gist, right? So you've got something common. It's a beautiful thing. Every, it's, it's maybe available to everyone in the public. And then slowly people start taking advantage of that. Uh, and that leads to, let me see if I can refresh this. And then that leads to an abuse of the commons. And I think what we're seeing is that like the public facing parts of the internet have become the commons and the people who are building those things um, have kind of started like, taking advantage of the people that are taking advantage of the commons. I don't know if that makes sense, right? Because um, here we are trying to do our best to build on these platforms, to build a Twitter presence and to build an Instagram presence and to grow our YouTube presence. Here we are live streaming, um, you know, and, and just trying to like get out there somehow and take these ideas out into the world. And so here we are taking advantage of these commons, right? But then you see other people that you know, and, and I don't know that this is wrong. This is where I want to have the conversation. This is where you guys can jump into the comments here. Um, like, what is the right way to take advantage of these things? How much of these should be public versus private? Like, like is the Webflow community better than the general Twitter community because we're taking ownership in that community? 
And so therefore it creates like a higher threshold to what type of information gets shared or how people enter the space. Or is there just some level of like buy-in because you have to find it? You know, like Twitter, anyone can stumble into Twitter. You can start piping your thoughts out into the ether and then your thoughts are out there in the ether, but maybe nobody sees them. Whereas in, at least in this Webflow space, you got to kind of find people to connect with. You got to like touch base with someone. You got to like anchor those thoughts to some level of reality or risk somebody telling you that you're off track or that you're not doing the right thing. So I don't know. I'm just wondering all these questions about like how do these things like come together and how do we make sure that we don't just siphon off or let certain people siphon off all of the good stuff that is the internet right now? Before we get a chance, because we're just kind of getting a chance to build some of these things. I think that's what's valuable at the no code and the visual software development space is that lots more people are now building. But how do we make sure like these things don't just like slip away before we all get a chance to kind of play properly? So that's the conversation I want to have. I see Josh just entered backstage. What's up, Josh? We've got Josh and Aiva. Let's see how to do this. Oh, you know what? I think I might have the wrong link. Go ahead. Um, Colleen, any thoughts on that or anybody else really? I'm going to... um. I gotta just switch this shot real quick. Give me two seconds. Yeah, no, I feel like. Good content, snake oil, snake oil salesman content, stuff that gave you pause to think about people that were not necessarily happy with something in the world, just, you know, kind of the town, town square, which, which was both good and good and bad. And I didn't necessarily engage a lot, a lot with, with some of that content was much more of a lurker, mm -hmm. but then finding the Webflow Twitter community, you know, definitely got much more, more active because I think, I, I do think that there is something intrinsically special about folks that use, use Webflow personalities and, and such. And it's just been very, very welcoming. And I am kind of curious about, I do feel like we're in a bit of a honeymoon stage right now. And I wonder what will happen as, as Webflow grows in, in size and such and the community grows. And, you know, will we still have this intrinsic quality of it's okay to ask a question and you're not going to have someone in the comments say you're stupid or you're dumb or you don't know that or kind of those types of types of things, which I feel like I've gotten in other no code communities when I've been engaged, um, as well as just. Twitter before I kind of found found the Webflow space. So I don't know if others can relate to that, if that's just just been my experience. So I'd be curious to hear um, other other folks take on that. Yeah, Aiva, you got any thoughts? Let me, I'm, I'm trying to, let's see, that looks like it, there it goes. There we go. <laughs> there we go. For some reason, it wasn't bringing the other folks in. So there we go. Now I got all of them. Okay, what's up? We've got Colin in the background. We've got nice. uh, Josh Lowe in the background. I can't really help the cropping, and we got the Aiva. So, any <laughs> thoughts on that? Tragedy of the Commons, things we're talking about. Um, if we get one more, we can get a nice little grid layout. So, if you're watching, <laughs> click the link in the description, and we get one more person back there. Come, come on, in, Devin. Come, come, come. We need more. Come, come, Devin. You got lots to say. I know you do. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, Josh. Any thoughts on this? Like, what what are you thinking? Uh, I don't know. I think it's. I, I'm still just observing. I'm still fresh to the scene, but I think um, I think at the end of the day, it's just like maintaining your humanity and try not to get like whatever this like, yeah, celebrity complex or like fame get to you and just be real and just share what's authentic and try to do the best for the community. At some point, you're going to get really big and get saturated then. I don't know. I, I almost feel like when you hit a point of saturation, just like move on to greener fields elsewhere or somewhere. Like I always think that's just a natural way of things like I'm not even progressing about and like, don't I'm not yeah. even talking about people becoming like popular or being influencers. Yeah. I mean like um like I don't know, you're seeing a lot of people on Instagram right now hide their like count. Like I, I had my like count and I don't do it because you know, like any particular reason other than I think we should just get rid of the like count. Um, and I see popular accounts do it too, right? Like I was okay. looking, I think uh, Joe Rogan, I, was, I saw one of his things. He has his like counts hidden. I'm okay with that, right? Like why mm. do, Why are we just all, and I, I don't know. That's why I always go back to the incentives of the internet. Is it is the incentive to be the biggest group? Or I think one of the things I have here is like, because um, I, I had this, uh, where is it? 
uh, deeper social networks, right? Because I think this is what we're really looking for more than what the current internet is built around, like shallow, big, mm -hmm. lots of volume, everyone mm -hmm. hear me, like let me see how many millions of people I can reach. But I've also then seen instances where like you get that kind of vibe and then you try to get people to show up in person and no one shows up, right? And so like where do you find the balance of like, real people versus some kind of numbers things. And then you see all these people hacking Twitter right now. They're, you know, like reply for mm. reply so that we hack the algorithm to show like so many more people doing X, Y, Z, et cetera. You know? And so it's like, there's just games that people are playing. Aiva, people do this with SEO all the time, you know, like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. they do. They definitely do. And that's what I love about current as, as Colleen says, like the current vibe in Twitter that we have there yet up until like Raymar said in the last, in the one of the last videos was like, it's not going to be this friendly in a few years. So let's enjoy. Uh, but people are still kind of having this amazing, I don't know, but I'm going to help you the best way I can uh, thing instead of the opposite kind of reaction. And yeah, in SEO, uh, you're right. That's, that's, that's the opposite. That's the old school way. That's the guys that's working 10, 15 years. And there's like a lot of flipping things and, and kind of arguing about stuff, uh, because the topics become complex. So we're still accepting this. We don't know. And I think that's the magic here as in we niche down enough, but also are willing to experiment. And that's like the cool part about, I think what we're having here in the network. And that's what makes it magical, right? The ability to kind of look at yourself and say, well, mm. let's see how this pans out, right? Yeah, I, I agree. And I think the in-person stuff, can, can, we take, uh, can we take this as a moment to like um, just talk a little bit about what just happened down in, because I think the in-person stuff, I think one thing we all have in common, Josh, what was the difference between like, and Aiva, we haven't met in person yet, but I know like going to state of flow, Colin, uh, Josh, uh, Colleen, I know the first time we met in person, like those are big, big moments, you know, when you get like the opportunity to just see someone in person. So we did that. We did a little of that recently. Let's take a look at that. So for anybody who's just watching, this is uh, this past, what was this, past Tuesday or a week ago, a week ago. Yeah, a week ago today, we're down in Buenos Aires. This is the first State of Flow international event. We did the State of Flow here in St. Pete. A uh, buddy of mine said, hey, do you want to come meet me in Argentina? And I was like, all right. I reached out to Mason Poe, who has some team down there. And I think this is this is, gets to the root of it, right? Like, I don't know Mason personally, other than like, through this community. And I don't know any of these people. And then I just happened to bump into Matisse, who's a designer down at, at FinSuite. Um, what's his name? Gabe, who's the video uh, videographer at FinSuite, you know, who I used to work very closely with, are down there. Um, I, round, I found out that there was this conversation that I'd had with Pablo, um, who's one of the guys that helped us organize this, about like, hey, who knows where we're gonna connect? Like two years ago, we made this connection on Twitter. And then here we are like doing this meetup in person. And so that's what I want to know is like, what's different about the connections that we're building in this space that lead to traveling thousands of miles for meetups or that lead to kind of hangouts like these that become, you know, like the global open house, right? Like these events are just more than just, I don't know that they, they, they're more than just your typical online events that you might be used to. And so that's kind of what I'm, I, I don't know what the real question is I'm, I'm asking here. I just see something different happening in the space where we are versus like a lot of the rest of the internet. And I want to know how do we do more of that outside of our little bubble? Well, I, I think like a part of it is there's something really just completely authentic about the in-person experience. So 
I guess from my perspective, I'll, I'll just be honest, like I'm not a, a huge social media person. It's my goal to be a little more active on there because I want to reach people. But to me, a lot of these like online communities, Twitter, um, they're all kind of facilitating, I'd say, some of the deeper connections that I'm finding in real life. So being able to start a Webflow in-person group, being able to have those in-person experiences, um, that to me, I guess, is sort of the, the deepest experience, being able to literally like pull up our both of our laptops side by side and be like, cool, what are you working on right now? Like, oh, I see what you're working on. I had this problem like last week. Here's how I fixed it. There's something truly magical about that that I don't think can be fully replicated in sort of the commons, but I think the commons is a great way to facilitate those in-person communications. Is part of it, I'm hearing like the word experimenting. Is it because we're so new and such early adopters to things that it's a, I know that there's so much that I don't know and just curiosity and willing to experiment and willing mm. to be open and willing to share and not necessarily maybe having yet had kind of maybe going back a little bit to what Josh was starting to say, having developed the, the egos or celebrity that uh, maybe has come with some more established established things where people feel like they need to, to pump on their chest and say, look at me, look at me. And, you know, as part of pumping oneself up, it's putting other people down. Hmm. And maybe we're just not at that sta stage. If that's the case, I hope we never leave it because yes, I, 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 love, I love the curiosity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll add to that, to, to your prompt, uh, Raimar. And the reason why I was, went off in this celebrity thing because I, I was reading Devin's uh, comment and went off in that, that vein. Uh, I think really it, it comes down to the experience of interactions, right? So what is your experience of interactions on online format where you are, you know, you have a screen, but you can easily click close and then you got you know, you're just distracted with so many other noise. Whereas if you go in person, that's all gone. Like you have an allotted time, you're here for the weekend and everyone's here together. And so there's that ex experience of interactions way higher. And then also the focus is a lot higher too. Whereas at home or any other platforms, like, are you able to be pulled away from it? If not, mm -hmm. then that's great. And I think that's why I really love the whole platform of live stream because now I'm like fixated, I'm not as distracted, and there's that like live interaction as opposed to just a recording where it's a one-way communication. So uh, however you foster that, I think that's really what matters and what people really go towards because they want to know, okay, I'm at, I'm at this point in my journey and I want to talk and interact with other people and hopefully they can, I can be inspired to forward me to you know, wherever I want to go. Um, and then, or, you know, if you're ahead, more ahead than someone else, then you can, you can pass it down and then, you know, bring them up to the journey as well. So I'll, I want to follow up on that with just a quick question. And then I'm, I'm going to jump, uh, I see Devin just jumped in. What's up, Devin? Um, so I wonder if there's a way to recreate and I see like flow party doing things like this. I see the build and bond again. I see learning environments, Aaron Cornblit with his, you know, automate all the, the, um, things stream and now over at Webflow, like. I see people kind of doing that where they do these Timothy Ricks, right? Is a huge community of people that are learning and, but, but, and that's like a live stream thing slash a video content thing. I'm wondering if there's a place and maybe this is where y'all can help me think like, like a live lobby, like a live co-working. I know gather mm -hmm. does some of that, but we've thought about, and I've been experimenting. Like if I were to show you uh, back here, I have like this little screen here with the ability to bring in the iPhone here with, Spotify on a playlist and we're going to get we're going to get some kind of violation here if I like let this thing go but like I really think there's a place to kind of bring in a lot of some multimedia stuff inside of an environment where you can do everything and then like you start programming it right so like imagine it's just there and it's not always public right you got to kind of be inside and and I, I don't know like could you create some of that real world thing in a virtual world and should most more of our social experiments be pushing in that direction like is that the stuff that i think you know like that that could solve some of the problems that we're talking about here about the internet mm -hmm. kind of being you know what it is um i'm gonna pass the thought to to devin here and anybody else that wants to jump in but we'll, we'll give devin the, the screen as the new guy i feel like you just put a really big spotlight on me um <laughs> I think that your your point about sort of bringing everything into one, at least as I understood it, bringing it into like one sort of OS, right? 
is that kind of what you're getting at? Like taking everything and putting it into like one big platform where everybody can sort of be a part of like a, almost like a coffee shop, right? Yeah, like just gathering around that, like, and working together. You never know who you're going to bump into. You never really know what's happening. Maybe there, maybe you could because we could have a community calendar and that way we could make sure we don't overlap stuff. But then there's just like this town hall. Like one of the things we're doing for this global open house is we're building this like virtual village. And so like could we get programming in there where like all these different meetups are happening and maybe we can mm -hmm. even take some of the technical hurdle off of people's back end by allowing them to just show up and do some of the stuff and can we help produce it and make it nice and like Josh and I have talked a little bit about like, you know, can we do something where like next thing you know, we pop in from one studio to the next studio to the next studio. Like how does the news do it? Like the news does all this shit, right? Like the actual TV and these things kind of work yeah. in this way. And we have all these skills at our disposal. Like, could we start building this like deeper type of social network that somehow all the things we're already doing, but under one place that we can help with discovery and visibility mm -hmm. and kind of density around the topics. Uh, that's, you know, that's the, the, the question in my head. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> It's a deep question I and I don't know yeah. how it works because I don't know how the incentives align around this. Don't forget that we are those, you know, people that flip the, the status quo, all of us. We're all early adopters, heavy thinkers. That's why we chose Webflow way too early before it became like the thing it is because we spotted that. So people that kind of are in this community are not the actual perfect sample to understand how this would actually work in the bigger sense. So we're now in this perfect world where everybody's an early adopter. That's why we share a lot of curiosity and we can communicate about it. Hence, we create these things as in Raymar just connected his phone to the stream, <laughs> which is who does that? <laughs> but early adopters do that. And we all are, all are, hence, as Colleen said, we know how much we don't know. And that's what makes this community awesome. But replicating it, I think that's the hard part because not everybody is that, not everybody thinks that way and not everybody values the you know, truth against their feelings or any other kind of sense that math they, they would do. So it's awesome that you're digging here, but as you say, it's a hard puzzle to solve because math will not be the same every time you try to replicate it or embody this kind of energy vibe and then you say real events and real people because meeting somebody who's a mirrored reflection of you is already very cool right mm -hmm. yeah and i think maybe that's why you just got to do a certain frequency like you just kind of got to do a lot of it right josh were you were you going to jump in there or... yeah yeah i don't know i'm i so i go on these crazy 5 a.m early morning walks yeah i've seen them and I have, and I just have time to reflect and thought. And this morning I had a thought like, I don't know, just about like human connections. I mean, it doesn't matter what tool or platform we're on. I think as long, I think what's really important is um, this, this feeling that like, okay, you're not alone. Like wherever, you, whatever you're doing, whether it's, yeah, designing websites or whatever, can you find a community where you can just come together, whether it's in person, online, or whatever, but just really develop that connection to say, hey, you're, you're, yeah, like we're in this together. You're not alone. Um, and you have that support. I think that's one of the main things that make a community a really strong community. But um, yeah, curious what you guys think about that. Yeah, I think you're dead on. And I think there's this thing also that, like, um, you know, there's this idea that you have to have, a hundred people on a stream for it to be like an effective stream, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, when I think exactly what you said, like if people are getting the value out of it and that's where I keep wondering like a live desk, like how often am I sitting at my desk? It would cost me next to nothing to like, just have office hours every once in a while where people could just pop in. And I'm sure there's, you know, eventually like maybe I charge and I do charge for some of this work, but maybe I give some of it for free too, where it's like, Hey, people need strategy. You want creative strategy. You want marketing strategy. For these two hours a week, I'm just going to be in here answering questions about like marketing strategy. Come pitch me your concept and let's look at it and see, you know, what we could do, how it might work. Let's, you know, like just break it down a little bit. And I think those kind of things, like some of the accountability group stuff. So I don't know. I've been struggling with how do you do that? How do you balance doing that for free? 
because almost all the community work I've ever done has been for free. And I value that because I think, you know, you want zero barrier to entry for other folks who might be hungry to get to a, mm. a higher level. Right. So like, I don't want to put big hurdles in front of people, but then at the end of the day, you got to pay your bills, you know? And so like, there's always that. And so I don't know. That's the other thing that goes back to this question. It's like going back to the video of the commons. Well, when somebody owns the commons, they're usually a little better. And you see that when you like private parks versus public parks, you know, walk down the streets of San Francisco versus the streets of a private park <laughs> or in San Francisco, you're going to see a very different experience. So like, like, does somebody have to own it? Does the, like, can the community own something collaboratively? Like, right. Wow. Fuck. If I know, you know, like these are deep questions too. I know we're just wrapping them around the internet, but these are like deep questions that lie at the kind of the root of just society. I think, you know, I think it, I mean, we, we've touched on this on previous streams, but it comes, boils down to common values, right? Like as a community, what is the shared values? Because then let's say one of the values is, you know, respond like self-responsibility or, or whatnot or ownership. So then if that is baked into the mindset of the whole community, everyone wants to foster and look after it. But if it's just every man for himself, then yeah, it turns out to be this like ghetto place. Right. So I think, I think those are the fundamental things that you need to anchor down, like the culture, what culture are you building? Yeah. And to not get like even deeper with like the philosophy, cause you have the tragedy of the commons, but then you go to like the, the Nash equilibrium, which I don't know if you're familiar with that. Ooh, well. What's that? So the Nash equilibrium, have you ever seen a uh, beautiful mind, the movie, the yeah. beautiful mind with like uh, Russell Crowe. Yeah. So he plays John Nash. who's like this, um, you know, savant mathematician. And he comes up with a theory throughout that. And the Nash equilibrium is basically the best move that anybody in a competitive environment can take so that everyone has the best possible outcome. So mm. if you like, and it's, it's, it's actually like a beautiful theme in physics. So it's like the example they use in the movie, which don't cancel me is just how they do it. It's like, so it's a group of guys at a bar and there's a group of girls at a bar and they're all <laughs> like, they all see the one, you know, they're like, this, the one is like the bombshell, you know? And so he explains <laughs> it like this. He goes, if we all go after her, and we all strike out, then none of her friends are going to want to like talk to us because we blew our shot going after them. But if we all kind of just like take the next best alternative, which is ignore the really pretty one and all go after one that's kind of in our league, <laughs> then we all have the highest likelihood of winning. <laughs> and so it's like, it's not the best example of this. I'm sure there's way better examples, but it's just goes to show that if selfishly you go after the thing that's like the best possible outcome for you, everyone may end up getting a worse outcome than if everyone takes one step back from what that best possible outcome is. And it's still the best possible outcome for everyone at the table mm -hmm. to have the best possible outcome. And that's like, it's an important economic theory because everyone mm. can win, right? It's like the theory of a win-win situation. It's a true win-win. And that's where I think like, mm -hmm. how do we bring some of these you know, I doubt, and because when social media was being built, it was just like build the biggest slot machine you can for incentivize the likes to get the action to build the, the buzz. And nobody was really thinking, like, what's the long term societal outcome? And I just don't, mm -hmm. you know, like, that's where I think some of these other things need to be thought about as we build and being as we're the ones building these new things. Like, how do we think about that stuff in a way that's. I, I think it's important not to be naive that the decisions that we make don't have consequences. I mean, it's, I think it's all well and good to think, you know, great things and everything's going to be good and, and, and tools aren't necessarily going to be used for, for bad. I mean, a tool is a tool is a tool that doesn't necessarily have motives. It's what we do with those. Mm -hmm. It's how we use them. It is the actor who is potentially a bad actor, depending upon how you define bad, taking that tool and doing something with it that that causes harm. Um, so I don't know. I like to I like to view the world with my rose tinted glasses and think that everything's going to be OK and hmm. kumbaya and, and wonderful. But I also know that that's not necessarily entirely the case. You know, we've been talking a little bit here about like experimenting and being early adopters and those and those types of things. And you know, part of part of that is we don't necessarily have 
like at one point there was like the talk about like laws of the laws of the flow or like what is it or you know mm. groups tend to have like a a mission statement a vision statement mm. uh this is who this group is for i don't know that we in this space have something like that or maybe we do and i'm missing it um you know maybe that's a that's a piece but then that i feel like also takes away some of the magic that we've been talking about so I, I keep thinking like, um, <clears throat> you know, you go back to the U.S. Constitution, we the people, we could have like a constitution for the Internet, we the creators, you know, in order to in order to form a more perfect Internet, <laughs> you know, like, uh, to, to like, I don't know. It'd be interesting to, to just think about like what could those guiding principles be to shift those incentives of the Internet, you know, into that new mechanism, because people still have to get paid. Right. Like we talked about before. And then there's this other thing that's growing. And this was the energy down in Buenos Aires. It's such a different world. Like if you just live in the States or if you live in a modern developed world uh, and you don't understand the value of like the U.S. dollar in a market where the dollar is like shit. If you don't understand like how hungry some people are in places around this world mm. to just like break in and take your fucking like job. You know, like we run around here in the States and in a lot of Europe and a lot of places in Western developed nations thinking like we like we're owed something because that's the narrative that's kind of been projected around us. And I see all these like college kids and people around me and people in my community that they just kind of expect that they're going to come into this world and make a decent living and have some of this wealth that's been generated, you know, before them. And then what I also see outside of that is all these people that are just kind of cracking their way onto the internet and finding ways to attack those like, you know, uh, profit centers and those put those op those new opportunities. And I don't I, I see an imbalance there too with effort, with you know, with willingness to work, with with a lot of things. And it's just making me question a lot of like the foundation of what our society is built on. I think is being shifted. You know, and it comes down to like being the pioneers, like you said, we see this, we're on the front lines building this internet thing and, and we're doing it in our own little way. Other people are doing it in their ways, you know, and all together somehow in the next 10, 20 years that like flips some big switch. And, we're, and, and I just want to make sure that when we flip that switch, we don't like cut out half the fucking society, you know, like there's... And I think that's also what pushes us because so many of us want to grow and, and pull other people along and like build these systems up. But these, these things really like they keep me up at night, right? Trying to figure out how do you open up these opportunities to like as many people as possible. Um, and then you see some people just kind of perverting them and stealing as much as they can for their thing. And you're like, fuck, how are you ever going to win? Like, how do you ever beat those guys without playing the so game? That, that that law that you described prior kind of reminded me, I think on the same concept, not just not the same part of the math, uh, Kruger's archive, a same identical video, which explained how this concept econ economically works and what you just said even reinforced me to kind of for sure mention it. So it works on the way of helping others when you have enough, because if those people, as you say, like in third world countries or whatever, if they live better, there's then there's more scientists, more doctors, more everything. So if they win, you win more, meaning there's more people now working towards uh, innovating, creating, making new things. So that part is the crucial thing, as in not feeling that you're sacrificing something, but feeling that you're helping them. And as a result, knowing that this is going to work in the long run, because of course it will. You're helping them now, and then their children will be, you know, there's going to be more scientists, more, more doctors, more creators, more inventors, and more Nobel Prize winning, you know, guys leading up to that and stuff like that. And that part, as you say, we're, we're always going to be in this balance, the greedy against the, the, one, the noble or, or however you're going to call it, right? Because you know, we have a saying in my native tongue, everybody hands bends to themselves. So it's normal for us to be first me, but you have to know yourself when to stop and say, Hey, that's enough for me. How about mm -hmm. others? Well, how can I help others? Like what's, what do, what, how can I help them? You know? So that part, if we pinpoint in the new internet, that part, I think it's going to be awesome. But how do we get 
I hear you in a world that moved at the speed of people, which we, we're leaving quickly. Like, I don't think the world moves at the speed of people anymore. You know, I used to think like technology could only move as fast as, as the fastest person or as the slowest person would pick it up. But I think we're kind of getting to the point where these systems, and this is, this is really, again, going back to the commons, what if you're the first person to the commons and you steal all the grass before anybody else even realizes their grass to be had? Yeah, monopoly. That's it. Yeah. I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens with chat GPT. And I feel like <laughs> yeah. just, you know, like the past year, the past six months, the past three months, the past two weeks is just when you're talk making a comment, talking about, you know, things moving at the speed of people. That is definitely not moving at the speed of people. And I feel like at least what I'm seeing a lot of is, is kind of that like land grab and taking and using and exploiting in some ways and other ways, opening other opportunities um, at a way that just kind of continues to, to make things separate things more and more and more. Um, yeah. I, and there's no way to know what those repercussions are going to be. But I that, don't think. And that's what I mean is, 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 like you won't know, we won't know what we've done. We didn't know what we did with Facebook until it was done, right? We didn't know what the Google advertising model did until five years in and we were like, oh, fuck, you know? So like, so I, yeah, go ahead. I, I think this is where regulation kind of comes in naturally, well, What the right? fuck do they Cause... know? Oh, no, yeah. they don't know anything. No, no, but, <laughs> but no, no. So yeah, I get it. I get it with the government and all that. But I, I'm saying like when a new technology or when a new opportunity comes and it's, yeah, like, like uh, who is it? Steve said, it's the Wild West, right? So there are no rules. We're figuring it out. But eventually, you'll see that those who figure out early, they are taking it like they're at an advantage. And then the, the rest of the people who are just, you know, don't know anything, they are at a disadvantage. And so there's this huge gap. And I think this is where naturally government or whoever, whatever body, um, I think the proper role for regulation is for the general public to, you know, have some rules so everyone has an equal playing field or at least have an equal opportunity. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking. But I, I wonder, though, um, you know, I'll, I'll stop that point. I'm just going to put a vortex thing. next to Don't forget. Me. As we think Don't about forget. these thoughts, I'm just going to like... <laughs> <Yeah>. just, <laughs> it's like, I'm just going <laughs> to... Let's don't <laughs> forget that... Distracted these, there. <laughs> let's don't forget that these uh, exploitive systems collapse on themselves. So you say Facebook, you say Google, you say they will eventually collapse on themselves. For example, now Google is still waiting to release AI on top of what's happening. That mm -hmm. means that you will not visit websites they will scrape data as they're doing now of websites and they will use AI to answer your questions without you actually visiting the source. Guess what that means? That means it's over for their module as in they will not, not there will not be any incentive to provide data with them. And that happens every time there's a too big of a data set. Eventually there's no incentive to give them your work, your creations, your, whatever it is. And that's, that's why it always collapses on itself. If it's too big and too greedy and too exploitive too fast. Right. I'm glad you brought up this example. Cause this is something that I was thinking about, I don't know, within the past couple of days or so, and be cu curious to get your thought of, you know, so there's, there's, there are folks that are talking about chat GPT and other technologies, basically, you know, taking, taking away from Google and that we're going to go to those sites and, you know, type in our questions, we're going to get those answers back. What does that mean for us who are creating websites? If these tools are basically giving people their answers, they're not necessarily going to be coming to websites to find, mm -hmm. you know, who's the greatest pizza in my local town or, you know, whatever question it is that I've had that I've, I've been going to a website for. So as a, as a business owner, what do I do? What does that mean? Yeah. That, hey, if, if you're watching and you want to join the conversation, uh, there's a link pinned in the comments. You can join backstage. Um, I, I think this is where I go back to we have to think about the regular world. There will always need to be property. If there's ever going to be freedom, right? If you think about, um, <clears throat> okay, 
property as an ownership of some some sort. Yes, right? It's the pursuit yeah. of happiness, right? Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. If you understand, like if you, um, the early iteration of that was life, liberty, and the pursuit of property. And Thomas Jefferson at the last stitch basically changes the pursuit of happiness. But they understood that to own property was happiness. To be able to alienate your own labor and to then be rewarded by owning the fruits of that labor was the only path to happiness. And it's like one of the deepest truths we can ever remember, especially as we go into this digital world. Like, yes, maybe URLs will disappear, but we still need to have something that is a surrogate of property in a digital world that builds value based on the work you put into it, which again is why I think these communities become so important and why I think it's important for us to then start taking ownership of how we arrange the, 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 the mechanisms we build that generate attention on the internet, because those will be the properties that matter, right? Going back to your point, Aiva, like maybe not giving that to Google or maybe not just making it freely available, but having some space in a place that people can find, whether that's directed through a URL or some other way to get there, that by being a part of this thing, you have some sort of societal advantage. And that digital property is what I'm talking about, like building those things. Like, what do those look like? What are those things? Maybe they're not websites. Maybe they're not web apps. Maybe they're not social networks. But there's something like that. There's something like what we're doing right here where it is a virtual thing where we exchange ideas and we have, you know, information that can be exchanged and there's places for people to interact that somehow builds value by being a part of that. And part of it's ethereal, parts of it on the internet, and part of it's in the real world, but that somewhere inside of there is a thing that has to happen for like the next phase of the internet to, to not just be, you know, serfs and, 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 and tyrants. Because if you look at all of human history, like the subjugation of people has always been the path, right? Liberty is never an accident. And to think that through these digital mechanisms, they're not just gonna try to do the same thing is silly. And so we need to be the ones, we the creators, again, we the people, we the creators need to be like trying to figure out like how do we build things that protect us? And I don't know. Like that's why I ask questions of Webflow. Like what would you do? Would you shut it down? Does it need to be WordPress? Does it need to be open source? Does it need to be like, like all these things matter because we're all putting our brains and our intellectual capital and our property as it were in a digital sense in some kind of thing that we don't own. We don't know how to stand it up. We don't own our own servers. We don't know any of this shit. And we're putting a lot of trust in these, in these entities. And that's again, where it goes back to like, these questions matter. And yet again, we're now on YouTube discussing that. Right. <laughs> Which is a good step, right? The, the fact that we can still discuss these things publicly, I think that's great. I think it's, I think it's amazing. I think that lots of people are having really high quality conversations like this at scale. But the question is, till when, you know, and like, are enough people hearing it? There's 11 people right now. There's 14 people watching. <laughs> it's going back and forth. So like, if a tree falls in the forest and nobody hears it, does it make a sound, you know? I don't know what the answer is. This is good. It's good to just chew on the, on the questions. But I mean, I also think there comes a point of like, you know, you get stuck so much, you know, it's, it's easy to walk away um, and not continue to have, have the conversation. I don't, I mean, I just, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, for some reason, I never really got into Facebook. There was just something that was icky and ooh to me about Facebook and never did it. I still, to this day, wouldn't be able to quantify what it is. And I mean, now in hindsight, it's like, okay, yeah, well, this, 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 and this. Um, but I don't have it. I mean, didn't have a crystal ball back then to say, you know, we're going to see this, this, and this, you know, negative coming out of Facebook. Um, I just, yeah, some of it, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. How, how do we have a crystal ball that potentially says, hey, we create this and this, this may end up being a repercussion. Is it, no. is it? Yeah. So, so what's, what's the, what's the alternative is the alternative to, I don't know, somehow, you know, like we have, I mean, this is kind of crazy, but I'm just going to throw it out there of, you know, we have holidays. So is it making time once a year to stop and once a year, once a quarter to basically stop and say, Hey, what is, what, 
how is our whatever it is that we've created having a neg if it's having a positive impact or a negative impact and somehow quantifying that there's things like the you know b corps and stuff that basically say hey we're going to do you know these are our principles and our alignments and we're doing xyz with does do we need something like that for the digital space yeah but it's got to be daily it can't be like annually and i don't mean everyone's got to be doing it daily but it's yeah yeah it's got to be so, part of the new norm just like we get on twitter and just like we get on instagram and just like we get on all these different places i think it has to become part of the behavior pattern and i think this goes back to the incentives like you have to somehow modify the incentive structures of the internet to reward those behaviors you know so to reward the sharing of good information to reward the uh, facilitation of community in a meaningful way to reward the transference of education in a meaningful way like i saw youtube doing something the other day where uh, they're working with some kind of university where they can actually transfer credits for watching YouTube videos to college credits. Okay, that's a step of some sort. I don't know what kind of step that is, but it's a step, you know? And I think those are the things we have to like figure out. And I, I think the other thing is like, this goes back to the meetups and the global open house and why the local stuff matters. We all get wrapped up in like, oh, we're the people doing the thing and we're the biggest this agency and we're the top SEO that thing and we're the biggest product for that. And it's like, okay, cool, but like, what are your homies doing around you? You know, like, what's going on in your town? Is the, you know, like, are there 10 people that you could get together in a small group? Are there three people that you could get together and actually teach somebody with a computer and build some of that locally? And that goes back to like, you mm -hmm. know, where, where I started was starting meetups. And where I started in community was like in real world things. And I think part of that, you know, is, is maybe something that should be considered too as part of this new incentive structures is not necessarily, again, going for big, wide, you know, let's cover the whole globe. It's like, no, let's dig down into a city and do something cool in that city. Let's plant a seed there and let's foster somebody there who can then maybe grow that little garden. And those become like, I don't know that that to me becomes part of the solution also i think we're all mentioning small in different patterns like mm. it could be small as in my hometown it could be small as in meeting for meetups you organize it can be small as in twitter is still small or surrounding buffalo so it's not annoying yet like for, for example wordpress it would be uh it could be small as uh any other kind of thing or it can be niched down enough so that a lot of people are not interested. Hence, it's still small because it's very kind of precise. Or it can be small as in 100 people sitting there learning the same thing at the same time or on the stream. And I think throughout this whole conversation, we all mentioned it in different ways, but the same concept. Um, and knowing that if, we, if there's some sort of monetary gain or any kind of thing, there's always going to be some sort of exchange needed as an economic exchange, unless we reach that singularity part where everything is just happening for free by robots, which I doubt we will, because it sounds more of a like dystopia than utopia, even though it would be cool, right? <laughs> so that part could be that the new, as we just mentioned in the beginning, the new social norm is small and precise, which becomes more valuable than big and inaccurate. Hi. Go ahead, Colleen. Go ahead. I was going to say, I think we're seeing some of that with it. Like, I think the real value in crypto is potentially that, is potentially being the rules engine for that. I don't think it's anything of what people are using crypto for currently. Right? Like, I think the real value in crypto is hiding, waiting for to actually become the laws of the systems we're talking about. And the people who win at that game will in five years be the one who, you know, like Microsoft or IBM or whatever, took this crypto technology and actually built mechanisms by which you can modify the incentive structures on the internet to be immutable and then give the crowd ownership of those systems and actually let those types of incentives proliferate because like you said, if you incentivize people equally, you know, to what, like if you can make money now doing shitty stuff and it's harder to make money doing good stuff, you're going to do the shitty stuff. But if you can make money doing good stuff and you incentivize the good stuff and it's easier to make money doing the good stuff than it is doing the shitty stuff, well, guess what? You're going to do the good stuff. And so that's why the incentives matter. Clip this part. <laughs>
sorry, I, I'm like kind of lost in all these thoughts now. What are we addressing? Like the main thing is it? <laughs> yeah, we're just having a good sorry. conversation about the building a better internet and the incentives on the the internet. Okay, you know? as a whole. So yeah, that's this like, a mega mega topic then. So it may not be us that will be coming up with the solutions, but like so we're we're are are there current problems that we're seeing now in the incentive structures in the current platforms and then. How do we address that? How do we how do we shift it to make it better? Is that yeah? I mean, we're on the ground level, right? We're using the current systems, and this new world that we're building into is this visual software development space where, theoretically, somebody in this audience or somebody watching this down the future or somebody somewhere is going to build some new version of something. Mm. And are they thinking about this stuff, or is everyone just trying to build the next Twitter clone? Right. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, are, right. is, 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 is advertising always going to be the only way we monetize things on the internet or is someone going to come up with some clever way to use these tools in a different mm. way? That's, that's not like only fans just, you know, pay gating your booty. <laughs> <laughs> you know? like, well, that's interesting. Not a, like, I'm not saying that's a bad model. I'm just saying it's only one model. <laughs> we need lots of models. <laughs> Cause that, that one alone is, is tapping into like the primal, you know, urges of like humanity and stuff too. Right. And so do you think, I don't know, you can call that like a low fidelity type of approach that it's addressing these human needs or whatever. And so uh, is there a big need for like higher level thinking, higher level concepts, or I don't even know how how to articulate this, but I hope I'm like, you guys are understanding what I'm saying. I think the model is right. It's a subscription-based model where it's an individual value exchange between the person creating the content and the people consuming the content. Mm-hmm. That is ide- like, that's the ideal model. Sure, it happens to be, and maybe, again, porn leads the charge because it seems like on the internet, <laughs> like that's how it works. That's how evolution <laughs> happens of the internet. But, um, yeah, like, and I, that's what Substack is. That's what Patreon is, right? Like, that's what all these new little things are it's an attempt to somehow remove like a uh, the middleman between you and your and your audience and then you, and become the new middleman well not necessarily yeah <laughs> I, ideally right like but you become the middleman like i want to be the middleman to my audience with my content like i want the content to be the middleman right so i want to be on one side of my audience i want the audience to be on the other side and then i want the content to be in the middle and there should be as, as few things touching that content as possible because the more things touch that content, the more things can either try to charge or interrupt or, you know, uh, adjust the trajectory or input, you know, some extra characters or remove some things or whatever, right? So, like, I think, again, going back to the purest mechanism, it is some kind of, like, peer-to-peer relationship, but you can't have social inside of a, a soul relationship like that, right? So then you go into, like, totally walled garden sure i charge for value these are my people this is my audience i've solved the Mm -hmm. problem for this small subset but where's the social where's the community side of that how do you then allow people to then build and attach those things or somehow then build a a social thing that allows for discovery and and reciprocity inside of that single player game Uh, it's interesting i mean you can just use the the metaphor of uh, yeah, walled garden in the middle of a jungle, right? So walled garden is kind of like the privat- privatization of things where whoever creates a garden sets the rules and depending on those rules, it'll thrive on and certain plants or, or incentives basically will grow in a way that it, it is designed to, to be. Whereas outside the walled garden, it's just a jungle. It's no, you know, there's no rules. It's just natural law will just take over. King of the jungle will just, be at the top and so uh i think to to i guess expect the way a walled garden system would thrive in a public system i don't know maybe that may not work i maybe you do need to put some boundaries and but set certain rules and yeah, things like that there has to be some rules but also mm-hmm. what you said presumes on like power being the only like mechanism for hierarchy Right, like that the lion's always going to be the one that wins. And oh, like outside in the jungle. Yeah, right. Like if that was true, like if you look at groups of apes, you know, it's not always the strongest ape that, you know, like kind of runs the social cohort. Oftentimes there has to be some semblance of balance. You can't just brute force yeah. everyone. And so a lot of times. And sometimes it's the ape yes. that started uh, well, breeding other animals, right? But 
that's a short term thing, right? Maybe in a long term, yeah, you're right. Like it's it's the one who has more strategy that that has more social pull that wins in the long run. But maybe in short, there there will be bursts of these short term right. bosses or whatever that that just will try to you know take things over by brute force. But uh, but we, that's not that's not maintained. That's not regulated. It's just it's just spontaneously happens, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it'd be interesting to do a step back before asking about like, how do we shift the incentives on the internet of what are the incentives? Mm -hmm. Cause in order currently? to talk about currently, uh, cur currently, and then also what could be, what could be an incentive that maybe isn't currently because whatever mechanism structures are in place doesn't necessarily support this little thing that could potentially be an incentive from, from actually succeeding or thriving or even existing. It's, yeah. I don't necessarily have anything necessarily in mind, but I mean, incentives, I mean, yeah, there's always the, the, you know, there's that classic case of, you know, taking a look at your sales team and, you know, you're not necessarily getting the outcome that you're wanting. Well, take a look at the incentives that you're giving your sales team. If you're rewarding your sales team to do X, Y, Z, they're maximizing to be doing X, Y, Z. And that's why you don't have ABC happening. You, you, you change the incentive compensation structure and all of a sudden um, you're kind of, kind of changing what sales is doing. So if we want to shift incentives, I would say some of it is what is it mm. that we would want or should be or think existing incentives are? Because if you don't, have, if you don't name it first, then how, how can you potentially shift it? Mm -hmm. So money is obviously, you know, a biggie. Mm -hmm. Which would mean conversion and attention. So attention is the, the first one, then it turns into conversion and then it turns into money, right? So eyeballs as an attention economy, would that be right? Or do you don't I think, think attention is the only one that matters moving forward? Genuine attention. And not just attention, but like uh, attention with action. You know, so like, conversion, some sort of, doesn't need to be conversion in a sense, hey, go through my pipeline and we're going to suck you dry for money. That means, hey, stay with us here and uh, be more than 12 people here. Chat about because we need to get this message along. Hence, we have to convert our ideas to your head or whatever the currency is. It doesn't need to be monetary. It can be idea as a currency as well, right? We're now trying to preach to the choir and we only have 10 people, but it would be cooler if we could have more, right? Yeah. And I think that just takes time. This is a different format of show than we've ever done. Um, I like the idea of just having these kind of ethereal chats. And I think we're going to keep experimenting with some of this stuff, even though I know it's not, uh, it's not maybe prime. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, if you're out there trying to learn web flow, maybe this isn't like <laughs> <laughs> exactly where you're going to be tuning in, but those aren't necessarily like, there's so many people that are doing that. You know, there's so many people that are just teaching about the tool specifically that I would like to have some of these conversations about the output of the tool and what we're building with these tools and not just with Webflow, but as individuals working together in this digital world. I think I think some conversations in that realm make a lot of sense for us because we could be the leaders that cause the thing to, to be a year from now, right? Like we could have a network of the things that we're building and we're already doing it, right? Like we're already doing it kind of in our own way, but we're all kind of doing it for ourselves in our own way. And I'm wondering, is there a way to point some of that, those efforts towards not just ourselves, but also across the bow of people who don't even know it's coming for them yet. You know, people who could then step into that cross light, if you will, and use it to, to elevate themselves or to, to learn from us or to, I don't know, use it as the thing to do the next thing, right? Like I think about all the interactions and relationships that are coming from the meetups and different things that we've had over the years. And Josh, mm -hmm. I'm sure you're starting to see this too. And anybody who builds community, Melissa, I'm sure, you know, as she's seeing the flow party stuff and like just the connections and the things that come out of it, there's no way to quantify it over time. Mm -hmm. So Colleen, I don't know, going back to your point about like, maybe we do need to have a session where we like write down the incentives Maybe we take note about which ones of those we can actually impact and how we, you know, could potentially start working as a small group together. Because one of the things I want to do is figure out how to do more of that Buenos Aires thing. 
the energy in that place, in the place where, you know, like we expected 15, 20 people to show up and we got almost 60. And wow. The energy of just like seeing this thing come to life. Like we planned it in two weeks. You know, we planned it in two weeks. We promoted it. Um, let's see. We can like maybe pull some of these. Yeah, I got to get the, get the phone, phone piece in. Yeah, let me see what I can do. Let me, <laughs> let me see if we can. It was just so much fun to like uh, connect with them and to just be in a, in a different part of the world. You know, like yeah. uh, just exploring beautiful things, beautiful people. Uh, where's the event? Let's go to the event. It was surprising to me that the menus were all like all the prices were written in uh, by hand because the prices are changing so fast. Oh, crazy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but let's go to the group here. Shout out to Florencia and Pablo who yeah. killed it, you know, organizing this thing, helping us organize. But, you know, t like I've done this a couple times in different cities where you just you pop into a city, you do a thing and here you so go. Cool. You know, and so it's like, how how many other places can we do this? And now you've got a, a big group of people there that are excited about continuing to do that in their town, you know? And so who knows what their next meetup does and who knows what that leads to the next thing. And where else can we do this? Like, where else can we plant a seed? So well, it's like yeah. Co Colin, who was on the, on the stream earlier, was at State of Flow. And then he met a few folks who have now started events and events that we've been to that are in other parts of Florida. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so coming back to the, sorry, the, the incentives, I think you need to understand what the needs are first, right? Because how can you incentivize something if you don't know what people need? And I don't know. I mean, to get the super meta and fundamental, like you go down to the Maslow's hierarchy of needs and like, what is, is financial like needs? Is that like the main thing that everyone's looking for in this community? Then, okay, then let's yeah set up structures that we can all benefit in like some weird referral gig economy or, or something where everyone benefits somehow. But uh, yeah, just coming back to the fundamental needs. What, what, what do we need? Or even when you just show up on events like this, you may not even know you need certain things until you interact and, talk to other people and the conversation strikes and then you realize, Oh, I actually do need this. Um, so I think it's part of that discovery con continual discovery process of like, what do I need? And then how do we incentivize that? Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I mean, to the, the idea that we're going to like hit everybody's financial need is going to be pretty, pretty like, that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think we could help people find ways to their goals. That was always the, the, the goal for like the growth show was mm -hmm. like help people find channels to new revenue opportunities. I think mm -hmm. the, the communal goals, the, the, the support goals, the, you know, and we can't feed people. So obviously feeding people is, is going to be hard to do, but you're right. There's some things on those lists. Like you could nurturing people's like their potential. What you could equip them with the skills so that they can feed themselves. Oh, right. So that's, that's, what I'm talking that's about. that. That's what I love doing. It's yes, we can't feed everyone in terms of giving them money, but how about empower them and tell them that they can go out and get it. And then when they're, they're thriving, then they can pour back into the community. And that's when you have this positive loop, loop feedback, feedback loop. That's what I love. Yeah. So, but this, this is not bad. Knowing what you don't do is kind of more important than yeah. knowing what you do. Yeah. And in this sense, you just understand that your audience and the creator economy that should be finding uh, this, this kind of new frontier of, of internet is the one that already kind of can suffice themselves in terms of psychological and safety needs. So those steps are covered because that's a different story. And as we said, then they have to go somewhere uh, to learn how to use maybe Webflow or it's not Webflow, other stuff like business ac accounting, whatever, freelancing. Uh, but then when you touch the love and belonging and then next after that goes esteem mm -hmm. and then self ex mm -hmm. action. <sighs> and you know what's the last one? Self-actualization. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so those last three ones, yeah, yeah. there we say, hey, all right. So and from that point, 
what's those incentives? Like, what's that? Like, what are you seeking after you covered the food and the roof and the shelter and the job and the, mm-hmm. and, and, and then you seek next level? You know, what's, what's that looks? Because it's different for everybody. That's the yes. magic here. It seems exactly. like, oh, the last three steps are identical for everybody, but it's so different. Because yeah. first two are identical for everybody, but the next ones are not. Yeah. And they all affect our, our career, right? Right. Um, you could be like a shell of a person and then you just try to scrape by, but then you're pretending to like have it all together in front of your clients and you can only go like that for so long. So then, you know, and anyways, this is like, this is all personal growth <laughs> stuff, but I think it'd be great to be vulnerable and to actually share this in a space where we can actually say, again, you're, you're, you're not alone. We're in this together. Um, and that human, the side of humanity comes in. Um, yeah, I think it's just all beautiful, but at the end of the day, we all have to take personal responsibility for our own personal development. Um, but it's just so much better to know, Hey, there's other people to do it together with. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the point here is, uh, these top three layers, right? The love and belonging, the esteem and the self-actualization, right? Cause mm-hmm. it's hard for us to, I mean, we could help with the physiological, but you know, uh, in very limited, Sex and sleep. Yeah. <laughs> very, very limited ways here. I think, you know, like, uh, you know, maybe if we're locally, I'll uh, buy a drink or, you know, we can like, eat, eat, you know, <laughs> share some food or something. Um, but yeah, I think once you get into that next step, right, it's like, that's when you can start. And that's where I think some of this community stuff comes in. And I think, um, you know, it'd be a lot for us to think that on the internet, we're going to solve all of these problems. But I also do think that, you know, it's time for us to just start thinking a little deeper about how we interact with these, you know, these digital boxes that are providing us so much um, in a world that's changing so fast. And that's why I ask these questions about, you know, like there's so much potential. And on one road, I really do see infinite potential. And uh, I see the world of abundance. I see the promise that the internet was, was, you know, like intended to be. And then I see this other thing that's like this predatory, ugly, swallow Mm. the world type of thing. And I think this is our battle. Like this is our, as, 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 as our generation, like the, the fight we will have our kids and their kids will look to us and be like, what the fuck did you do? Or thank you so much. Like there's going to be two things that happen, right? Like one of those two things is going to happen. It's going to be like, you, you, you either set us up and this is an amazing world. And thank you for like directing this properly or, Mm -hmm. you know, like, holy shit. Why are we fighting these stupid fights again where we have to fight for our basic human freedoms like these mm-hmm. things are these th- we should not be having to rehash some of these battles mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it seems like the smartest people in the world are literally trying to figure out how to just trick us and how to like manipulate us and instead of figuring out how to actually bring some of the best things to life we have more people just trying to figure out how to extract all of the value out of this system for themselves and that's that's the part that's broken to me that needs to be addressed. But let's mm-hmm. don't forget what part of the world still solves those first two step problems. And it's way much more than you want it to be. Like it just that's why the, the as you say, the top is trying to manipulate because it's easy to manipulate somebody who's hungry. It's harder to manipulate somebody who's reaching for the last step, right? Isn't it? Or yeah, no, this is getting so complex. Yeah, man. it's crazy. <laughs> we're gonna leave this. We're gonna leave this uh, here at the uh, top. We're. I think we're uh, at the end of time and the end of the philosophical stretch of uh, this conversation here. <laughs> I love having these talks though. Like this is. To I me, love it. To me, this is like. I don't know. I don't. We don't. Don't do this enough. <laughs> you know, it's like challenge the the extension of your your thought and like, you know, yeah, come back and build some websites tomorrow. And let's go back to a, a Reloom Design League and build a beautiful brand and logo tomorrow. But also fucking think about we're we're on the front edge of a really important thing that's happening here. Um, well, and I mean part of that when you're just saying about go go you know go build that website, go do this, go do that. Maybe it is taking a look at who is that client that you're building that site for. Mm-hmm. Can you know, I leave? Maybe, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry, no, no, go ahead. Uh, that was it. That was it. <laughs> I just want to, if I can leave like a final thought for, for me, just to like what I've gathered, 
I think I love uh, Ida what, what you said, like go local, niche down on local. I, I fully believe that because I think at the end of the day, if everyone like localizes to their own local domain, whether it's your home, right? Like again, beyond websites and all that, uh, the the business stuff, but like, like, are you responsible in your home, in your family, or even like in your, your local friend group? Because if you take care of that domain and thrive, make that thrive, and everyone does that, ideally, then the whole world will be good. But sometimes lo people's local situations and environments aren't uh, that good. And so I think that's where internet communities are great. Because like, yeah, I'll admit, like where I am now, it's it, it like it's not the most thriving area. And when I reached out to the international group, like I got so much back. And so now I'm, I my needs are met, and then I can pour back into the local yeah. uh, economy, local group. So I think it's just finding those gaps and where can you, yeah, where can you find those domains where you can make it thrive? And if you don't have the resources, then reach outside, um, and bring it back. So, yeah. We have a new uh, new entrant to the space here. Let's uh, bring Ronald into the oh, scene. Nice. <laughs> What's up, Ronald? You got some thoughts to add to the mix here? What's up, Ronald? Hey, hello. What's up, Ronald? If you could mute your YouTube. Um, uh, you could mute your... Yeah, mute your YouTube while you while you figure that out there. Uh, there you go. Ah, I think this is better. There you go. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I found this 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 video very very interesting uh, to to get into this philosophical talk. Uh, I think it's it's necessary to have these kind of conversations, and it's very easy to be laughing about it at the end and like, ah, well, philosophical stuff. Let's, let's move on with work again. But I think I don't know. I feel a little bit like almost upset about it. <laughs> 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 I don't want anybody to feel upset, but definitely something to think about. I, 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 yeah. I think, I mean, my goal is to have conversations like this much more regularly. I'm going to start experimenting with like even Twitter spaces. This, uh, one of the reasons the phone is here is actually to connect it to Twitter, to Twitter spaces. So we're running tests on that. We've, we've done some successful testing there too. So, um, and to start collaborating with other folks. There's other folks who I think we can help from a production standpoint um to do i don't know to just keep experimenting like this yeah i think it's really nice and, and yeah, the the, the self-actualization when you're able to get to there that that's um when i talk from my experience uh i i felt the time when i was below in this pyramid when i was uh being very poor myself and now being able to being at this self-actualization piece uh, I, I've been thinking about it a lot myself, and um, it makes me think of the the creative ways of getting other people in there. And and I think that is that is what we can think of more as well. Uh, I, I feel like the people in this kind of videos are already also pretty high in this pyramid. Um, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think for us, the folks that are able to have these conversations, our question is not. Because we've we've all at some level got to the place where we're sitting at our desk making a living and spending some fraction of our time kind of enjoying the this new world. Um, it's not to say we're all well off. It's not to say we're all without our own individual needs. Um, but it is to say that we've seen the potential at the end of these machines, and we understand what could be built here. And I think, um, yeah, I think us continuing to to figure out how. In our own small ways to to do that um, becomes just a, a big win moving forward. So for whatever that's worth, I hope this sparks some thoughts and some conversation, uh, both today here in the crowd and for who any, anybody else who might watch this moving forward. Um, I think there's some moments here that might make sense to clip, so we will probably do that. I think. Um, I don't know. Any final thoughts from the from the folks? I'm glad we're experimenting and having these conversations. I'd be curious to see where these lead. It yeah. certainly got in my mind just thinking. So, you know, I hope that there's a follow up. Yeah. Thanks for creating the space for the conversation. It's very important. Yes. Yeah. And thanks for thanks for thinking outside of the box. And mm. uh, we're not learning about diff blocks here, which is <laughs> awesome. I love that part. 
I want to have I want to have more and I and I think um yeah you expect a lot more experiments like this in a, in a bunch of different topics they're not always going to make sense to Webflow they might not all happen under the state of flow brand to be honest I think some of these may get peeled out of the state of flow just so we can keep the state of flow kind of more specific to digital creators and Webflow stuff and then I'll kind of start experimenting in another place um probably with some of the Atmos stuff maybe like an inner core team. Uh, the base layer before we start laying the atmosphere over top of the rest of it. So um, selfishly, a lot of this stuff is really me experimenting and doing market research uh, and kind of exploring ideas for concepts that we have for things that we're building, which hopefully we'll tell you all about very soon. But uh, we'll leave it at that. I appreciate you all tuning in. And uh, let's see, we'll put this thing up in the background maybe. Yeah. I don't have an out. I don't have an outro video yet. I think that's such a tragedy. But <laughs> <laughs> just awkwardly send it out. I need something that loops out. I have the intro, but no outro. Anyway, <laughs> peace, y'all. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Catch you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.